All right, so good morning. Welcome back to JPCE Spiritual Talk. It's Jared Campbell. So this morning's devotional, No Sin. And a reading from 1 John chapter 3, verse 6. But before we get in to our morning devotional study, we're going to start out by asking the Lord a quick prayer. In the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we're going to ask the Lord to shine to our hearts, O loving Master, the pure light of your divine knowledge. And open the eyes of our mind that we may understand your teachings in Scripture. Help us to apply what we learn so that having conquered simple desires, we may pursue a spiritual way of life, thanking and doing all the things that are pleasing to you. You Christ your God, you are light, and to you give glory, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and this ages. Amen. The Lord is our shepherd. All right, good morning. Welcome back. So great is his faithfulness. Indeed, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Again, again, my mother, brothers, and sisters are those who hear the word of God and do it. So good morning. Welcome back. So no sin. A reading from 1 John chapter 3, or 6. The true definition of minister is to serve someone else's will. It's my pleasure to bring you all God's word each and every day. Thank you all again for following. Great is this faithfulness. Truly it is. And Christ is truly in our midst. All right, here we go. So no sin. Here we go. So first John chapter three, verse six, in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Everyone who remains in him does not sin. Everyone who sins has not seen him or known him. First John chapter three, verse six, in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So the Bible makes two things clear about sin. First, living a lifestyle of sin indicates that you are not walking in the power of the Holy Spirit regardless of what you say about your spiritual condition. You cannot regularly spend time studying and meditating on God's word, praying and walking in fellowship, Holy Spirit, and persist in sin. Second, if you do not hate sin the way God does, then you do not truly know him. There are those who continue in their sin and yet insist that they love God and belong to him. John made it clear, if you have a lifestyle of sin and you have not seen him and do not know him, you may have prayed a sinner's prayer or made a commitment in your church or been baptized, but the evidence of the Holy Spirit's presence in your life is that you are defeating sin. This does not mean that you will never sin, but it does mean that you will refuse to make sin a lifestyle and you immediately seek forgiveness when you sin. First John chapter 1, verse 10, so true. It means that you are opposed to sin as God is, and you allow the Holy Spirit to eradicate immediately. So you allow the Holy Spirit to eradicate every trace of sin in your life. It means that when you sin, you immediately confess and repent of it and do whatever is necessary to avoid repeating your sin. You find yourself falling into sinful habits or not grieving over your sin as you once did. This indicates that you are not abiding in Christ. Return to him and re return to him in repentance. Restore your fellowship with him and you will once again experience victory over your sin in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. A beautiful reading and a beautiful reflection. Let's talk about this, though. Let's look at some of these verses and let's talk, right? All right, so First John chapter 3. Let's look at verses four through nine here in first John chapter three. So we're going to read this, break this down. Sin and the child of God. All right. So starting in verse four, zoom in, everybody can see that. And so it says, whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins and in him, there is no sin. 
Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who has sins is of the devil, and for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might, might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin. For his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin, because he has been born of God, named the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So let's look at what this is saying, right? So John, right? So St. John is the author right, of this book. So here, St. John is talking in what in general terms. So he's talking in general terms, right? contrasting this world with the world to come, right? The Christian through sin through sinful does not sin, right? So let's look at verse nine. It says, Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. So right there in verse nine, so does not keep on sinning, right? So we're not supposed to what keep on sinning. So in a in a general sense, we're looking at this in general terms, right? We're not to what keep on sinning, right? We're not supposed to. And if you've been born of that new creation, you become that new creation, then you cannot keep on sinning, right? Not not in the fact of your old ways, right? We we will always fall short of the glory of God, but it's talking about your old life. You shouldn't go. You should not go back to that, right? So here, J John, talking in general terms, contrasting the world and the world to come. The Christian through what? Through sinful, though sinful, right? Even though we're sinful, does not sin. There in verse 9, it means we are, we are not to keep on sinning, okay? Especially as the world does. The church lives under God's influence. The world under Satan's lawlessness. Let's look at verse 4, right? So the world is under what? Satan's lawlessness. Look at verse 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness, right? Because the devil is lawlessness. He's the, he's the father of disobedience father rebellion right so right there the world's under satan's lawlessness is living without law right is living without law and hard enemy to god the devil right look at verse eight he who sins is of the devil for the devil has sinned from the beginning for this purpose son of man for the son of god was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil we might destroy the works of the devil, right? We'll get into that just in a second, right? You got to pay attention. You got to read, right? So the devil, verse 8, slander or what opposer? Because he's opposed to what God is doing. He's a creature, a fallen angel. So he's a fallen archangel from the beginning. Verse 8 refers to Satan's season. So he's, he has not quit sinning what since the fall, right? Let's look at John. Real quick, right? It's, so, John, before we get out of here, John chapter 3, verses 16 through 17 might be it. Here we go. Right here. It says, For, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. See right there. So he uses might as well. Just like back in 1 John. What do you think that's indicating? Right. See, our salvation is a gift, right? God's mercy, God's grace. But it's a gift what you have to accept, right? So that's what it's saying. You have to accept this gift, right? It's not something that's just given to you, right? It, it was never just given to you. You have to accept it. You have to walk in the light. If you want to stop sinning, then you have to be that new creation. That's what it means. You have to accept it and become that new creation, right? We must ground ourselves, right? See, people read the Bible. They don't read the Bible right sometimes. That's why in Orthodox Christianity, we understand the relationship between God and man, right? 
And there's certain things that we do that draw us closer to God. The things that we do, we do not do because they'll get us into heaven. No, we, that's not what it is. The things we do prepare us for the kingdom of heaven. Prayer, fasting, almsgiving. Right? Keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking, right? Those are the things that we do, right? Because it, it keeps us, it's part of our disciplines, our obedience, right? One must be obedient to God. Let's go back and let's look at what it says here, right? So it says in verse 8, he who sends the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil, right? So he destroys the works of the devil, right? And he can destroy the works of the devil through you, but you have to accept that gift, right? Because through you, he'll destroy all that and make you that new creation. But you have to accept it. You have to walk towards the light. You can't be a Christian, right? You can't be a, a Christian who flirts with both the light and the dark. There's no excuses, right? A Christian should never have to do anything evil, right? There's no excuses for that, right? No. None whatsoever. You're to walk towards the light. We must work our own salvation. The Bible tells us that. We are to work our own salvation. All right. So 1 John chapter 1, verse 10 says, If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Right? So we all sin. We all fall short of the glory of God. And if we say we have no sin, make him a liar so when christians out there say i don't have to repent when you make christ a liar you have to repent every day you should seek god's mercy each and every day that right there is what's enough for your salvation because you're saved through god's mercy right it starts with god's mercy right so if you seek his mercy each and every day you're seeking his forgiveness right but you have to seek that mercy each and every day, right? And you seek it through prayer, right? You ask in prayer. And then you want to seek, right? Seek his truth through the scriptures. You seek by learning God's truth. And then what do you do? You knock by doing as God's will. I told my Sunday school class this on Sunday, this past Sunday, we ask, seek, and knock. It's a continuous communion with God to one to draw closer to him. We work our own salvation, become that new creation. You know, we you have prayers that can be said every day. One of the things we use in orthodoxy, we call it the Jesus prayer. And it's really, really simple. And all you, you can repeat it three times, or you can say it as much as you need to. And it's really good when you have anxiety. And it goes like this, in the, name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses. Forgive those who trespass against us, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory, the Father, and the Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever. Sages. Amen. <laughs> Psalms 50 or Psalms 51. If you, if, if you have an Orthodox study Bible, Psalms 50. If you don't, Psalms 51. It's another good prayer to say for forgiveness. It's a prayer by King David. When the prophet Nathan came to him, so King David could confess his sins. Confess your sins to one another, right? That's biblical. These are ways you keep yourself walking in the light. Confess your sins to one another. Be there for one another. Thank you all so much. We're going to close out. All right, I'm back. Close out in prayer.
Remember, walk in the light. Go and sin no more. Right? The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, Lord God, you spoke against your divine and words. You illuminate the souls of sinners. The comprehend what we just read. We don't appear simply as hearers of spiritual words, but doers of good deeds, true pursuers of faith. Having a blameless life and conduct without reproaching Christ your Lord, you are light. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever. The sages, amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. And forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever. And the sages, amen. The Lord is our shepherd. We depart in peace in the name of the Lord, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Peace be with you all. Go in peace. Shalom, shalom. May the Lord forgive those who love us, those who hate us. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you. Be merciful to you. Lord, lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. The sages. Amen. Chair Wesley Campbell, good morning, good day. Thank you all again. JPCE, spiritual talk, never ever hold back. Seek true. Keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, Mercy on me, sinner. Lord is a shepherd. All right. Love you all so much. I'm out.